Hey guys, it's uh, it's your favorite, your your favorite internet people, Matt Watson and say it, Ryan right. McGee. There you go. You said your name, dude. I did. I, I did. I remember five, my name. You know what's strange though? What's strange? Whenever I'm asked my age, I have to think about it first. Like I've started for, doing that too for a considerably long, like longer than it should take. Like when I was younger, I'd be like twelve. Hmm. I was just in Texas when I, I was leaving Texas, uh, like flying back, and any someone asked me like, "Oh, uh, where were you?" I, I had to stop and think about it for some reason. I was like, what, what, um, t- Texas. And, and like if they asked, and then someone asked me where in Texas, and I was like, where was I in Texas? Even though I was in Dallas. Yeah. But. I look so scared. Like whenever I'm buying something from a gas station and they ask me my age, their question is like, when's your birthday? And I'll be like, um, uh, J- June 14th, uh, 94. I do that too. And it I looks like I'm making up a birthday. Yeah, I know. Spot. It's like the worst. Like it's the absolute worst thing. I'm always scared whenever I show my ID if I'm buying alcohol that they're gonna think it's fake for some reason. Like I'm, yeah. I'm always like so on they're edge. Even, turn you away. Yeah, or, or like they're gonna like make it like some big deal, or like the cops are gonna come. Even though my ID is perfectly legal and I'm of age, I'm scared that they're gonna be like, wait a second, and like start questioning me about it. I'm really scared they're gonna ask me like my address and stuff, and I'm not gonna be able to remember it for some reason, or like my oh, birthday. Yeah. yeah. And I'll like completely mess it up, and they'll be like, get out of here. <laughs> and then they'll keep Shoot. my ID and put Shoot. it on the wall of shame or something. The like, wall of shame. Yeah, a lot of liquor stores have a wall of shame where they keep like they put up like fake IDs and stuff. That's actually really cool. Yeah. I want to see, I want to see those walls of shame. But my biggest fear is that happens to me just because, like, I forget my address or something, so they keep it. And I'm like, no, that's my that's my legal license. I'm, I'm I need sure that. you can call the authorities at that point and be like, hey, this psycho stole my license. <laughs> I, I need my license back. He's he's collecting my licenses. Dude, my little, on my on my driver's license, on my South Carolina driver's license, the the holographic, I'll show you, the holographic rainbow foil. Uh, you too? This, <laughs> I wish. The, uh, the holographic, like, plastic that's on the front to yeah. keep you from counterfeiting i can peel it off now so if anyone wants to make a fake id i'll sell them my little holographic clear like plastic so you can put it on yours and make it look real if you want to have a fake south carolina id i'm offering this illegal service on the podcast right now for all of you that's uh, cool. how hard can it be to essentially well i know i would pr- jesus what was christ that? what would you knock over a dopey little mic bass oh fuck that Anyways. mic bass we, what we're fucking talking about? You were, you were saying, <laughs> I, I know it's... What? How do you forget what you were talking about? Like I don't know, seconds. I got distracted by a big fucking you're talking thump. about like fake it IDs. It jarred my brain, it boggled things around. Fake IDs? Fake IDs. Oh yeah, it's like, fake IDs, they have to be somewhat easy to make in retrospect because the means exist for IDs to be made in the first place, thus the ingredients are just left up to people to make them. You just gotta get terms. the right things, I guess. But then using that logic, then why ha- why don't people make ho- home-brewed Coca-Cola? Because the recipe's secret. Yeah, but how, secret come, how is it not leaked? Like a secret that big? People are like, the government is, t- is too dumb to pull off complex conspiracies. But how come, how come Coca-Cola's got a conspiracy? You're telling me no one... They, that is a conspiracy, you know? Like, Coca-Cola has a secret <laughs> conspiracy that no one knows. Except for, like, man, imagine... Isn't it just, like, the heads of the company know? And, I, like, that's it? I, I, I think... You think somewhere down the line it would have to... Would have like, to, leak out. Yeah. I wonder if that's one of those things where they say, like, two people know it, but, like, actually, like, a ton of people know it. So, well, I don't know, because, like, that is serious knowledge. And I bet if you find out what it is, like, if you're in the company, you probably have to sign some, like paper or some form where it's like if you leak this or this gets out you're gonna have to pay like yeah millions of dollars and then after you sign that form you go home lock your door you notice your window slightly ajar and then before <laughs> you can do anything you're shot in the back of the head you start seeing like by, by mr coca-cola himself himself <laughs> his big red suit <laughs> his big red suit is coca-cola tie dude if i found out something like the coca-cola secret formula i'd be so like every car that drives by my house at night i'd be like did, th- did that car just slow down outside my house <laughs> you see like the headlights like all of a sudden that 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 scene happens <laughs> happens in a movie where the headlights pull up at the front door and it's like shining in your lights and all of a sudden they turn off you're like <gasps> and you hear the t- car door close you're like oh shit <laughs> you hear the feet on the gravel oh my. that that would scare me hearing like kind of hearing the inevitability of a break-in kind of like oh i hear someone playing with my door right now oh fuck what'd you do i would just make funny oh. noises scare them away but and they'd run what i'd do is I, i'd first i'd call the cops then i'd be like leave Leave, I called the cops, that type of thing. Yeah. Because then I, it's like, the cops are on their way, plus I'm here, and I have a have a big baseball bat. Like, cuddle it, like, in your bed with you. 
in my in my bed. Yeah, like like hold like spoon the the baseball <laughs> bat. So then if someone breaks in, you can just like whoosh, you, it, it's it's your it's your partner. You know, you got it with I you. I can break it in half over my knee and then like attach a chain to him and use him use him as like awesome nunchucks. Well, imagine you doing that while someone's like <laughs> like in the middle of the break and like you walk out, you snap the thing over your knee. It takes a couple tries and you probably break your knee in the process. You definitely break your. I'm knee. I'm down on one knee now because my knee's broken. There's no way to break a baseball bat over your knee. Like, I'm sure there is. Is not, there footage of like coaches in anger breaking a baseball bat over dude, their knee? <laughs> I don't think you can. You know how hard th- that would be. Think, think about a baseball bat is designed to like absorb shock, you know, because because you're hitting. or send the shock straight to your hands if it connects with the lower portion of the bat, which fucking sucks. Yeah, you played baseball for a while, you know, you know all about that. <laughs> I think it's just hitting things with, like, if you hit something with a stick, like if you broke a branch off a tree, you'd still feel that shitty shock. Oh yeah, that's why the like when people do that that shitty thing where they're in like the back of a pickup truck mm-hmm. and they and they hit mailboxes with baseball bats. If you hit the mailbox like with the wrong part of the baseball bat, it just like destroys your hands apparently. I've never yeah. done that because that's a shitty thing to do. Baseball but... can fuck up your hands. Yeah, if you're, I guess if you don't do it right. It can also, I mean, baseball's terrifying in the first place. Imagine getting hit in the temple with an 80 mile per hour ball. Yeah, dude, baseball, you're literally standing there while someone with like, like a machine arm is throwing just a solid sphere at you at like 80, 90 miles per hour. And it's like, all right, hit it away from you now and then run. <laughs> it's one man with a tiny deadly weapon versus another man with a slightly larger deadly weapon <laughs> facing and, off. And then everyone on the field is like, we got to catch these deadly weapons and throw them around at each other. I wonder like if aliens like watch baseball, what they would think. Would they think it's like some kind of like standoff between like factions of humans? Mm-hmm. Like like they're fighting right now. This is This is how they duel. This, I, this is how humans fight. A lot of people give baseball a bad rep. I I can actually be entertained if I watch a baseball game because I, like I actually I actually think it can get tense at some points because you got people trying to steal bases behind the pitcher's back. The pitcher's got to keep an eye on that. The pitcher's got to think about what he's going to throw, what type of what type of uh, pitches this batter's good with handling. There's a lot of stuff, I'm dude. He sure. might. I haven't uh, seen Moneyball. Apparently, it's a good movie with Jonah Hill and Brad Pitt. Dude, and the pitcher's got to be looking out too because. He just learned the Coca-Cola secret formula. <laughs> oh, yeah. And he's, he's looking all around the stadium to see if he sees that man in the big red suit. It's like and all of a sudden he sees just one guy in the outfield that's wearing sunglasses and a suit with a baseball cap on. He doesn't recognize him. He's like, Doom. who's like, that? Why is he wearing Why isn't he wearing uniforms? Coach, like, who's that? And all of a sudden the coach Doom. is like, oh, you you remember him. He's always been on the team. Doom. I mean, like he like he just like looks at him and like nods his like <laughs> like his little hat at him and then turns and walks away. Doom. 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 We should make a horror movie about someone that learns the Coca-Cola secret formula and starts seeing all these signs all of a sudden. Like an untold history story of fucking Babe Ruth figuring out the Coca-Cola secret formula. Dude, what if, what if like... And the reason all those scandals came out about him was act, they were all actually false. Yeah. And they were planted by Coca-Cola because he knew the secret formula. What if? What if people like... It's easy to be Alex Jones, man. Like, like John F. Kennedy learned the secret formula. <laughs> and like that's why they had to get rid of him. Like Coca Cola was him behind and his, his assassination. brother Bobby, because <laughs> he shared it with his brother Bobby. <laughs> yeah, he shared it with his brother Bobby. He's like Bobby, I gotta, I gotta tell you something. Good thing Ted didn't get any. <laughs> oh man, dude, and dude, he knew Marilyn Monroe too. He Mon- probably told Marilyn, Marilyn Monroe, Monroe, dude. He told Marilyn Monroe, dude. That's why she died too. That was no accident. Uh oh. Oh shit. Martin Luther King know the secret formula of that, Coca-Cola? It might have been. I Does don't it know. Go back to Abraham Lincoln, dude. Dude, Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> he was one of the first people to know the secret formula. John Wilkes Booth was a was hired by Coca-Cola to take Lincoln out. I wish history, like as complex as we think it is, I wish it all just came down to a bunch of political figures figuring out the secret of the Coca-Cola secret formula. Because it's one of those things where, like, like every every. 50 years like someone discovers it and coca-cola's like <laughs> i don't care who they are they have to be gone and like that that's what happened dude imagine having that power knowing the coca-cola secret formula like be like wow i'm one of the only people that knows it it's i, and I guarantee it's nothing special it's just like oh that's it really huh some corn syrup and mayonnaise <laughs> <laughs> corn, corn syrup and mayonnaise it's the secret formula i never guess it but i tried it and it, it it's it how, like how do, I, I'm actually shocked, like because you feel like other companies would be able to like take Coca Cola and then like, kind of like break it down and like taste it and like you feel like with science they'd be able to like perfectly clone Coca Cola, but they can't. Like no other company can. Same with like Pepsi, Dr Pepper. Like there's always something create, different about those. Create Coca. Like another company needs to create 
Coca-Cola using stem cells, dude. Dude, that's why we need to legalize no, that like stem no cell research. Sense. <laughs> Grow some Coca-Cola. Grow some Because there's no Coca-Cola cells. <laughs> dude. What? Believe it or not, dude. <laughs> Are you serious right I'm now? I'm 100% serious. Are you lying to me? I'm not lying to you, Are you Ryan. Are telling I'm a serious. big old fib? Ryan, I'm not fibbing, dude. I'm <laughs> you not better fibbing. not be fibbing with me. God, what would you, would you tell me if you knew the Coca-Cola secret formula? Yeah, I'd tell you. Careful, man. You're like the closest person that I know to me. Careful, right Ryan. Because if you ever find out, just by, even by accident, Coca-Cola could listen back and be like, he's already a liability because in the past he said he would tell somebody. And then all of a sudden... Where, where's my friend Ryan? Ryan's missing. I'm trying to picture a universe, though, where I would know it and you wouldn't. I feel like you and I are attached currently right now. Like, in ter- like it would be a brand deal with Coca-Cola where it's like, okay, do the make your own Coca-Cola challenge. <laughs> with corn syrup and mayonnaise. <laughs> like, like, like we're, we're, we're like goofing around and then like you, we mix corn syrup and mayonnaise and we realize that that is the secret. Like we discover it. Can someone uh, tweet at us a video of them like getting uh, some, what is it? Tonic water, putting yeah. in some mayonnaise and corn syrup. Mix it up. Mix it up and tell us if that's Coca-Cola. It might be. I don't know. What if it really is? And like <laughs> Coca-Cola like comes down on us with like the heaviest legal hammer we've ever seen in our life. Our video, you gave away the video. secret formula on your podcast. <laughs> and you have a goofy illustration of it as the thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, guys. Well, you can make we, we now you know how to make your own Coca-Cola at home. Would this be like a national like news scandal if we just leaked the secret formula on our podcast? If we did it by accident, it would it would go down in history as one of the greatest findings known to man. Corn syrup and mayonnaise yeah. makes Coca Cola. It's like, a chemical reaction. Like fuck those those douchebags with brushes brushing away bones in the desert. Like come on, we're the real historical figures. We're the ones discovering shit. Yeah. Matt, Matt and Ryan from Ooh, look, Super a bunch Mega. of bones. Anyone can put a bunch of bones together and call it a giant lizard. In but fact, can, but can 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 most people put corn syrup and mayonnaise and tonic water and call it Coca Cola? Nope, don't think so. Yeah, guys, you listen to the Super Mega Podcast, you discover some uh some some new stuff like the Coca Cola secret formula. I know that I forgot what what product it is, but there's some secret formula where no one actually knows it, or that's mm-hmm. what they, that's how they market it. Yeah. They're because they're like they're like only two people, like one person knows half of it and the uh, someone else knows the other half. But I'm mm-hmm. like, well, how do you make your your drink then? Because the thing is at the Coca Cola factory. Someone's got to manufacture whatever the secret stuff is to put into the drink, you yeah. know? So wouldn't wouldn't more people have to know the secret formula? Because, like, Coca-Cola is... They're all employees. I feel, like, I feel like the base mixture is created and, like, only people at the top level know. I don't think, like, people at factories actually brew it up. I don't know. I went to the Coca-Cola factory once. I, it's all machines that make Coca-Cola, right? It's not, like, people going... Oh. Little drop of this, little drop of that, we'll it with a big spoon. I wish it was like a bunch of like German housewives, <laughs> like with aprons and like mixing up like like a, like a little little dash of this, a little sprinkle of that, all singing along <laughs> in a nice old Coca Cola song. That'd be amazing, man. Like that would make me want to drink Coke even more if I knew that like that much like love and and yeah. and hard work went into it. If a bunch of robots make something for me, I'm like, I, you know, where's the love and passion in this? Yeah, but if, but unfortunately, sodas can't help you. You know, be all healthy and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of being healthy. What? Something about Beachbody Put and a pre recorded Beachbody ad. Here it is. <laughs> Ryan, do you want to get ripped and have huge muscles? A lot, yes. Then use Beachbody on demand. It's an easy to use streaming service that gives you instant access to a wide variety of super effective workouts you can do from the comfort of your living room 24 8. Oh, that's a typo. 24-7. This is the company behind a lot of awesome workout programs like P90X and Insanity. I mean, I do P90X, and Matt, you do Insanity, and we're looking epic. We're we are actually looking really epic these days. Not just the programs, they also have super trainers you might know, like Sean T or Tony Horton. Oh, shit, Tony! I love me some Tony. Have you seen that dude's nipples? <laughs> I'm serious, have you? Dude, his nipples got biceps. They do. It's because of Beachbody. So what are you guys waiting for? You can work out on your own schedule. Uh, you can do workouts as short as 10 minutes that don't require extra equipment. Uh, in the time it takes you to drive and park at the gym, you could be finished working out. Guys, that's that's more that's more time for activities. You can you can do more hobbies and things with Beachbody On Demand, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. You don't got to go pay for a gym membership. This is cheaper than a gym membership. Have you seen my stepdad's update pictures? Oh, my God. He is looking... <sighs> I just want to kiss them all over. And it's all thanks to Beachbody. Not to mention, supporting Beachbody also in turn supports this podcast. Absolutely, because it, it, it helps us stay afloat, like a nice little ship 
on the ocean. Like a bunch of strong men keeping a boat afloat as they're rowing it. And to be strong, they probably used Beach Beachbody. Body. Wow, there are over 1 million people currently on Beachbody On Demand? That's more subscribe. Oh, shit. They're bigger than we are. They're way bigger than we are. And the best part about it, you can try it for absolutely free! Free. And you can get this special free trial when you text SUPER to 303030. 30 30. That's SUPER to 303030. 30 30. Whip out those phones, kids. Do it. I jump around. I try, I, I've tried several of the programs on Beachbody. And Ryan, feel my, feel my muscles, please. Holy shit. That must be P90X or Insanity working for you. It is insanity. And you know our favorite guy, Tony Horton. Remember him from earlier in this ad? Guy with the nice nipples? Ooh. Yeah. Guys, Ryan and I want the best for you. And that's why we want you to try this. We want you to... God, we want you to have those muscles. We, want, we just want to touch them. We want you to lose the weight you need to lose, gain the weight you need to gain, do whatever you need to do to be a healthier you. And right now, our listeners can get a special free trial membership. Remember, when you text SUPER to 303030, 30, 30, get the entire platform for free, all the workouts, nutrition information, and the support, totally free. Each body on demand. You'll, you'll look really good. That's the catchphrase I just came up with for it. That is perfect. <sighs> Well, I, I hope all of you can can get healthy. Speaking of getting healthy, Ryan, like, yeah. all that talk about Coke really makes me want some right now. There, we have Coca-Cola cans. In Do the we fridge. have Coke? Yeah. You can go get a Coke. Could you get me a water? I'm going to go get a Coke, and I'll get you a water, Ryan. Because you're, see, right now, here's what we're doing. I'm choosing to put <laughs> high fructose corn syrup and 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 fat and just mayonnaise. D- just and mayonnaise <laughs> in my body, and you're choosing to put beautiful water, hydration. Well, I've been bad these past few days. I need to get back on the ball. I've been... I've been enjoying junk food. I haven't had junk food in the longest time. And this past whole, I think almost a month now, I've just been really enjoying food. Like, not going hard like I used to. I used to go hard, dude. Dude, but, you went you went ham. Yeah, I'd go to 7-Eleven every night and get like a, get a bunch of, I'd get gummy worms and I'd get like a bunch of fucking drinks. I remember, dude. I would go with you sometimes. Get a big old honey bun. Get like... Ten dollars worth of just like garbage and candy chips, and yeah. plus that means like earlier that night I also I also probably had Buffalo Wild Wings. Oh like, man! Oh my god! Thinking about how I woke up and how I felt internally those mornings is awful. It's the worst. Like, I I can still I can still stop myself from eating too much. I can still eat an ex- excess, but now I never get to that point. I don't either because like I don't know. I I feel like I hit a point when I was. 21 like shortly after I turned 21 I'm 22 so this was not that long ago okay but I hit a point when I was like 21 where I just like hit this point where I couldn't turn back on like being conscious of um there's no turning eating a ton of disgusting candy and junk food because like before I could do it like guilt free and just do it but then I just hit this point where I was like this is really bad for me I really feel like when I'm eating candy it's slowly grating away at my teeth I feel like that and I also feel like it's just killing me because it's like I'm going to feel awful later, and there's no way this is going to make me feel good. It's not fueling your body well. No, like, it's sugar. Like, w- when you fill up your car, you got to use the right gas. You're exactly. not using the right gas. Exactly. You're, like, watering it down and you know, thinking, like, yeah, this will get me by. You are what you eat, is what they say. So if you eat a bunch of gummy worms, it'll just turn into a big gummy worm. Yeah, like a big Jabba the Hut looking gummy worm. That'd be pretty cool, man. No one. If you were awful. just a giant gummy worm monstrosity. Yeah. I'd take a little bite out of you. I love gummy worms. Gummy worms are the greatest, but I don't know, dude. I just like I it's can't eat candy like I used to. Sometimes, though, hard to what? It's hard to not be gluttonous sometimes because it's just like food is really good. Food is the best, and, and you just want to eat it. I usually get caught off guard because I'll start eating when I'm bored, or like I'm like, wait, I'm not eating right now. I feel like I should. I want to be snacking on something. I'm a little bit hungry. Let me yeah. Just, let me just start eating out of this chip bag, and all of a sudden the bag's over, and I'm like, oh wow. Hmm. Let me go watch this show, and then I'll like. Hmm. I could use an ice cream right now, like that type of <laughs> yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just builds up. Ow! What'd you just do? Pull the hair out. I'm seeing long hairs in the shower, and I'm like, my my mom visited so long ago. Like, why are her hair still in the shower? I'm like, oh wait, they're mine. Or your mom has like mutant hairs that are slowly creeping back up, and they're gonna <laughs> that like. That would terrify me. It's like what? it's like an it when when the hair like Dude. shoots out of the drain and like grabs her. It's gonna do that to you. Fully aware hair is terrifying. I hate that. Fully aware hair. <laughs> this podcast is sponsored by Fully Aware Hair. <laughs> fully Aware Hair. It's the best hair product in town. Dude. Well, not as good as, um, never mind. Actually, you know what? 
They don't have a sponsor this time. Not on this episode, so. I won't even mention your name. What if they pull the sponsorship because of that? And they're like, what? We didn't, well, we didn't, we didn't call you out. We didn't mention your name. And they're like, oh, yeah, well, you put two and two together. And I'm like, oh, oops, sorry. We, we love you. Whatever. Fuck you. Stop. I'm don't kidding, say that. Don't kidding, say I'm that. Kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. If you're a cool sponsor, you'll take the, the heat. They're not. Well, they're not. Yeah, that, that's true. They, they got to look hip and cool to all the millennials. Yeah. And if they know that if they pull it, all the millennials are going to be like. <laughs> Let's be honest. Their company can't afford not to look hip and cool. A myth. Right. Just <laughs> roasting really, this poor we're company. We're really just roasting them. We don't mean it. Yeah, we don't Please. mean it. Please. We we're just goofing around. We're just goofing. We're just throwing goofs all around. Like just like it's a big the subject. I'm scared. Um, oh man, Ryan. But if your hair, imagine if you imagine if you could feel in your hair. Like if your hair had nerves, mm-hmm. that would suck. Like laying in bed, you would like, God, dude, I can't imagine just how much. Like life someone would just suck. like, just like, started flicking your hair. Like yeah, that would or hurt. like sawing your hair. It would hurt. Like it would be cutting your skin. That would suck. Couldn't get a haircut. Or they'd have to put you under to get a haircut. Yeah, and each time it's like this surgical process. We're putting them under. Imagine going in to get a haircut and you're like, I'm sure well, there's your hair out might there. look better if they actually paid that much attention to how your hair was cut. Imagine places that specialize that much to where it's like, we're going to put you under so you're absolutely still and I can work with you the way I need to. Put you in like a zero like gravity a canv- environment. You're my canvas. Man, I would love to have someone cut my hair that like cared about it like so fucking much. They're just like, Listen, this is going to be like, I'm going to spend three hours and just, it's going to look great because usually when you go in to get a haircut, you know, it's a job to them, you know? Yeah. I'm, I'm sure a lot of people put passion into it, but there's a lot of people that are just like, all right, you're giving me money. I'm going to cut your hair how you want it. I want to go into someone that's, well, that looks at my hair. They look at the pattern, like they scan my head. They get the patterns of like the way, the way my hair goes here. And they're like, all right, this is the best way to cut it. And it's going to look good. And I'm going to spend hours doing it. And I'm doing it because I love you. And I have this passion for your hair. That, like, you you would have the greatest haircut ever, I bet. Yeah. It looks so good. But... It'd be like $5,000, though. Yeah, I just don't know what to do with my hair right now. I'm, I'm, I've always said, like, I'm in that awkward phase. I'm legitimately in that awkward phase of long hair. It doesn't look awkward. It looks, no, it looks like, fine. No, like, I mean, I have a hat on right now. Well, a beanie? A cap? A took? A took? Is this as, what this is? What the, what, what the, that's what they call in Canada. Okay, a took. Or I could be completely wrong, and all the Canadians are like, what are you talking about? What is Canada like? Is it nice? I've never been. I wouldn't know. I don't think I'd like Canada. I feel like I'd love Canada. Well, I not, not in the to winter. live there, but I'd feel like I could visit there, and it would. Be, I feel like I would love Canada to visit. I feel like it would be great, especially when it's cold, because I like the cold. But then all of a sudden, it's like it's too cold, Ryan. Fuck off. You you think you're just gonna you're just gonna fetishize Canadian culture like that? <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing, like because Canada, like the s- most southern point of Canada, is is more northern than the northern border of the united states and that's too cold for me (laughs) like like think about that like that's freezing man think about north dakota think about how cold north dakota is canada's above that do you want to live somewhere where it's that cold no and that no look california weather actually spoils a lot of people they don't get the humidity they don't get the biting cold i mean you don't get the bugs you don't get the pollen as much you get the pollen a little bit like i got the I'm feeling it right now. I need an Allegra, but it's have, not that bad. I have maybe gotten one or two mosquito bites since I've lived here. <laughs> yeah, like the mosquitoes are just, they go somewhere else. I don't know where they are. Like every now and then I'll get like a bug bite. It'll be like, where'd that come from? Oh, well. Imagine how Los Angeles would feel if the air was clean. Like the weather combined with like clean air. How great that would be. That would feel wonderful. You can kind of have like get that experience if you go out into like the camping sites like you and i did yeah oh it feels so much nicer the city you can notice like an actual like difference when you go somewhere um like away from los angeles as the sun shines through the smog it was a beautiful day in downtown (laughs) los angeles oh the smog there's so much smog man like i challenge someone to write like the opening of a book that takes place in downtown los angeles and not make it seem like it's depressing and gross like and be realistic don't be like oh the birds were chirping all the red robins were out flying around the clouds (laughs) were beautifully placed the cumulonimbus orgasmic fashions of society i don't know (laughs) (laughs) that's what a lot of writers do they use a bunch of words and mash them together and then by the end of it you're like what was that thesaurus.com excuse me 
Dude, I got mad respect I for did the that people when that I did was, that. I did that in uh, middle school. Oh, and I'd be like writing short stories. I'd be like, oh, yeah. I, I don't want to use this word. You'd like take a boring adjective, make it sexy with thesaurus.com. But, but I, of course, then sometimes you'd use the wrong type of word because it doesn't actually it just articulate doesn't fit. what you're trying to It sounds to say like it does, way. but it yeah. doesn't. I got mad respect for the guys that were able to write like that back in like the 1600s when they didn't, when the thesauruses were like, you know, not not a big popular it's thing. Like you had to go to the, 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 district library they had no they had to be educated to write and, like and, that dude and like look at a book that was chained to a post yeah or like <laughs> i i saw a book somewhere that was chained like to a thing and i think it was a dictionary at yeah. some like maybe it was at like the the some like national library in washington dc or something but it was it was like three feet big and it was like the biggest book i've ever seen i said that's a big book i can't read that whole thing that is a big book that's a huge book i i I'm trying to think of the biggest book I've ever seen. I'm thinking back. The Bible is a big book, but it's not that big. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot to it. It's a boring book, but, like, it's it's not thick. Like, you don't look at it and you're like, oh, that would take... that. That's 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 a reader, let me tell you. I couldn't. It's over 2,000 pages. I can't read that. I feel like the Goblet of Fire is longer than the Bible. Well, the thing about the, the size of the print... God of Fire's got more bigger print and more space. And the Bible's got like tiny print and tiny space. And it's 2,000 something pages. Like, whoa! Also not entertaining. It's not an entertaining 2,000 pages. They have little sparse moments of being entertained. And then they have... Ju it's just kind of like reading Shakespeare when you don't know the like certain cadences. and Dude, like, that's hard. Reading that Shakespeare time. is... It, I remember in high school when I had to like read a Shakespeare <laughs> book. I'd read like a page and be like, what the fuck did they just say? And like the English teacher, like, I'm like, why do we have to learn this old English? Like students in the class are barely literate as it is. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, why are we studying this? Like teach people how to actually use the language in which we speak today. Let me read fun with Dick and Jane or something. <laughs> like, I feel like English class should have focused more on kind of maybe even go into the history of our language so we can get to the stems and roots. Because it's like, we're learning stems today. We're learning vocab, but they never tied it together for me in this seamless kind of line that I think when you're learning something helps a lot. Like you progress in a certain way. Like with math, you have to learn things to progress to the next level. In English, it was like, let's learn some words. Let's, let's read a book every now and then. Yeah. With, but I think it would, it would have been better if they built upon the language more in terms of the way I was taught. In oh, my dude, way, yeah. it, was, it was very haphazard the way I was taught. Man, I did. I, I, I actually had to read some really good stuff for my, my AP lit class. Uh, cause, oh my God, I, I took an AP lit class in high school and the teacher was, I, I've never had a teacher that gave that much reading. Like, like, no, it sucked. I was, I was in an AP, so I'm trying much to remember, reading. I can't remember what year I was in AP lit, but I just remember that was the time where I think we read Animal House and the Odyssey and we just read a bunch of classics and like, we also read some new stuff. It was just basically the whole class was Read a book, take a test on that book. Exactly, Read a book, yeah. take, take a Did you test have to annotate the pages? Yep. I had to annotate the pages. And like, I don't, that, that when you require annotation like that, no well, one I takes mean, it seriously. We were supposed to. Yeah, you just I write. bullshit my Exactly. Like, I don't I, like, think a single person. Like, important character. And yeah, like, shit stuff like, like that. that. <laughs> or like, or just like, wow. <laughs> yeah, wow. But, <laughs> what? But, An animal. What, did I say Animal House when I said reading a book? Did you did I say, say Animal I House. Animal House. Like the movie? No, not the movie. What am I thinking of? Animal Barn? What's the fucking book called? I know what you're it's talking about. It's a big about. political book and they use pigs and farm animals. I know what you're talking about and it's not Animal it's not, I know Animal House is the fucking goofy like the, movie like the where the guy movie. climbs up on the ladder, sees boobies, and goes doom, and then he falls down. Yeah, it's based on the classic book. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? What is it? No farm, farm. The the barnyard book. Back about, to the barnyard <laughs> book about farm animals. It's communism. Is it about? It's about farm animals and communism. Animal farm. Animal farm. Okay, not animal house. <laughs> animal house. <laughs> I bet there's so many people who said animal house are like. Oh, Ryan. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Oh, man. I knew that I knew that AP Lit class was going to suck uh, when I got my summer reading list. And all the books were over 500 pages. And it was uh, pick three. Oh, well, I had yeah. to pick two. And then one of them was required. And it was like six or 700 pages. I remember going like, do they really expect me to read three books? I was like, holy shit. I cannot read this much like over the summer. And then I, I had to. And summer reading always turned into the thing where it's like, the you last two weeks of summer, yeah. you just have to sit and read books. And or it's the like, cliff <sighs> notes or spark notes. I was too scared to use those because I'm like, I'm going to get off to such a bad start. I did, though. For me, not with summer reading. I, I, 
I used those for summer reading, but I didn't use those as much. I used them like twice later in high school. Yeah. But like I didn't use them for the major books we were reading in class. I'd actually read those. Or like I liked it when we all read in the class and the teacher went along and explained uh, yeah, that's cool. To us. I really um I remember like oh man, um spark notes. I-, I think that's why teachers had you do annotations was because it's like then you have to go page by page. Mm-hmm. And even if you do fake it, it's like it just makes it that much harder, so you might as well read it. Yeah. Like I like reading. I I really do. I j- I need to do it more. Like I-, I just need more good books. I was in Barnes and Noble last night and I was just looking at all the books and I'm like, man, I-, I want more books. I just don't know like what's good or or you know where to start. Um, have you read The Road? It's I've not an read easy The Road. Read and I think it's really good. I know it's your favorite book. What's yeah. my favorite book, Ryan? I've said it a million times, man. Your fate. Hold on. Come Hold on, on, Ryan. Hold on. Hold on. I know your favorite book, The Road by Cormac McCarthy. Why don't you know mine? Because <laughs> your favorite book is fucking. Um, Hold on, I know it. The The Box Cart Kids. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, how did you know? <laughs> Dude, I didn't did expect you, know? you to remember. I love the boxcar kids. What is your kids. favorite book? Norwegian Wood. See, the, I can't remember that because I don't know who that who who wrote it. I don't have a Haruki Murakami. I don't know who that is. He's a super famous author. He's so good. Is he as famous as fucking Tolkien, dude? He's he. What, what Tolkien has more more years behind him? Is he is he bigger than uh where the sidewalk ends, man? You don't even know his name. So He looks weird. He looks scary. Shell Silverstein. Yeah. Yeah, he does look a little weird. It's a jump scare every time you turn to the back of the like, book. Ah! <laughs> you know, I'm here. Ah! He he's at the end of the sidewalk. You get to the end of the sidewalk and he's hey. <laughs> yeah. I love Shell Silverstein. Okay, so Norwegian wood. Norwegian wood. I have a hard time saying the word Norwegian. I always want to say no, like no no we no nor Norwegian. Norwegian. I want to say Norwegian. Norwegian. The Norwegian. Nor the nor Nordic Norwegian Wood's a good book. The it's Nordic really sad. Region. Norwegian. And also my second favorite book, if not tied with Norwegian Wood, is After the Quake, also by Haruki Murakami. After the Quake. It's a collection of short stories. Yeah, I read it, the whole thing on a plane, and I was like, <laughs> it's so fucking good, dude. Yeah. I have a lot of other favorite books. I read this, I remember I read this book in high school I really liked called Half Brother, and it was about this like family that adopted a chimp, tried to teach it sign language, and I just remember I really liked it when I read it. It was like, I thought it was super good. I read a bunch of sad dog books. I had a phase where like, I just read books about dogs because I wanted a puppy of my own. So even though I already had a dog, I just wanted a puppy. I wanted a beagle specifically. How great would it be to like, if they had a little pill, you could give a puppy and make it stay like like an Everstone or whatever in Pokemon where you can keep your puppy a puppy forever. I wish I could go back in time and see Lego as a puppy because I'll never have that experience of knowing what he looked like as a young boy. I bet he was cute. I bet you can get a professional Photoshopper to Photoshop him down. I mean, I've, se- I've seen dogs that look eerily similar to him, and then I've seen their puppy pictures, and I'm like, oh, he would look so cute. Just a little ball of fur, a little blonde ball of fur. So cute. Dude, he would have been a... I know, dude. He would have been the cutest puppy ever. He'd have been such a dopey little... He, I, I have to think that he was like the runt of his litter. 100 percent you know what i like about german shepherds is they have that thing where like when they're puppies their ears are down yeah and then one day they just go up and then they don't go back down so yeah. it's like that's like a milestone yep just like whoop that's cute he his ears are big he's got some big he's got ears. big ass ears when dude. his ears go back they like go up and then go down at an angle i don't know how to explain it. it's like it's like a sharp it looks like a like a like a pyramid i know what you're talking about in fact look at this look at this picture today uh, I, I have this that's picture like when, he, when he's like guilty of something. I'm like Lego. He goes. Hoo. I love how dogs like feel guilt. And Do they like, feel guilt, or is that like a misconception? Is that I don't know. It seems like they know when they've done something wrong because they, yeah. they have that look on their face, and like even if you don't call them out on it, like like you can tell they've done something like because you, they look guilty. Because there'd be times where I'd be like, what did you do? And I'd go search around and I'd find it and be like, yeah. Lego. Yep. And then like, he'd be like, he'd be watching me to see if I saw it. And then as soon as I do, he'd like turn away as more like <laughs> when I looked at him. I'd be like, ugh. Meanwhile, I, my cat can just shit on the floor and, and just not even care. Banana was mean to me, dude. Was he mean to you? He was mean to when me. When I was in the Texas and you didn't check on him? What'd he do? I don't know. He was just meowing. And I don't know it's, if it's because like he misses the fat Ryan. He doesn't recognize you anymore. The f- he's yeah. like he's like that. He's like that. He's the opposite of that YouTube commenter that was like, "I miss the old skinny Ryan." <laughs> yeah. Banana misses the old fat Ryan. By the way, look at this picture of Lego. This is a year ago today. That's a good picture. It's we put sunglasses on Ryan's dog and he looks all goofy. 
It's a wow, great that's picture. A lot of hair. Ryan, you should put this in. You should put this in the podcast so people can see it right now send on screen. To, send it to me. Here it is, everyone. Take a look at Ryan's do- doofy dog with some sunglasses on. Lego is such a good pup. He's I a love him. he's a good dog. Love him to death. He keeps a. Uh, doesn't he keep breaking your uh, screen door though? Twice so far, yes. He just runs straight through it. Yeah, but also that's, <laughs> it's like partially my fault because I should knowing Lego and knowing like dogs in general, like dogs are gonna be like. Wait, you have to wait for the screen door. Yeah, but a dog's not gonna know what a screen door is, especially yeah. if their vision you can't really and, see and it that he's well. He's ready to just bolt out of there and go to the restroom and shit. And it's just like, so part it's partly my fault, but I do get severely <laughs> pissed off whenever he does it, and I'm trying to not not forget, dude. To what? there's nothing funnier to me than when a a child runs full speed into a sliding glass door. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. Dung. Just boom. And then they like fall back and they're just like. <gasps> like their whole, like the reality is so like, what is going on? You can see the look on their face. Like their brain is trying to process what just happened. They're like, because like that, that's such a, I've done that before. Run yeah. into a glass door. I knew, My friend did that and ran straight through it. Dude, dude, speaking of like things that are hard to comprehend, like this deal at, uh, what, who, who is this one? This, uh, this is for, um, if you want to find some love. It, love is hard to oh, comprehend. E-harmony. If you're trying online dating, chances are you've run into, you know, lazy text messages, dead in conversations, and random matches that just don't turn into dates! Or catfishes! That's true. Actual catfish. <laughs> <laughs> Since last time, you know my stepdad has been getting all sorts of connections. But he's really found the connections that matter using eHarmony. He finds his most long-lasting relationships and meaningful relationships using this. And my mom's perfectly okay with it. Is she really? Yeah, she's really cool. Oh, pre- good for her. Good for my stepdad. Yeah, finding those meaningful relations about eHarmony. Let me talk about those numbers, Ryan. eHarmony's helped over a million people find their perfect match. You know, your stepdad's one of them. He's got your mom and a girlfriend now, and that's f***ing awesome. I know, I'm proud of them. Can All I, three of them. Can I, can I curse on this? Should you beep that out? Yeah, I'll, just just I'll put a beep. I'll just put a beep. Out. Yeah, I'll put a beep. They use years and years of science, data, and psychological research to send you the right matches. You know, you guys, you guys tired of these little hookup, hookup sites? Just try, try your harmony. Get some, get some, get some love. Get someone to touch your heart. Yes. You could actually date a doctor that could probably open you up and touch your heart. But, you know, you'll only find out if you use eHarmony and try to find the love of your life, which you will. Come on, it's eHarmony. Right now, our listeners can get a free month with eHarmony when they sign up for a three-month subscription. Enter our code SUPERMEGA at checkout. Stop waiting and start your journey to a satisfying, meaningful relationship. I want it! (laughs) I want it so bad. It can be fun to play around with online dating apps, but when you're ready to fall in love with someone and have a meaningful relationship, there's only there's only one app that builds to bring you real love. It's eHarmony. Guys, and then you can, you can be like, <gasps> you know, I was I was I was lonely, and then I listened to the Super Mega podcast, and they said try eHarmony by, by using the code Super Mega, and then I did, and then I found the love of my life, and I'll always thank Matt and Ryan because they're the greatest two human beings on earth. Come see how eHarmony can change your life. Go to eHarmony.com and get started. Enter our code SUPERMEGA at checkout. Remember to enter the code SUPERMEGA at checkout to get that free month of of, of love finding fun. It's pure love. It feels good. Anyways. Thanks, thanks, eHarmony, for sponsoring this podcast. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Oh, boy. Get us in the commercials. Ryan and I will be on the commercials. We will. Well, you know what time it is. Let's get back to the podcast. Oh, yeah. Look at that, guys. Got two in one episode. (laughs) That that doesn't happen that often. Yeah, they, that's they they yeah. Thank you for thank you for for listening though. Thank yeah. you and thank you to our sponsors. Without them, the show wouldn't be as epic. Guys, I know I know. Sometimes you know you can get you can get tired of of ads, but you know it's 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 how we keep this this show afloat. You know, it's it, how we keep it, this whole channel afloat. It really helps out. So thank you guys. You really you really do you, you help us out by listening. So thank you, thank you so much. You're welcome. Wait a second. What? I think they, didn't she, didn't uh, Stella order food or did she not order food to be delivered? Ryan, do you think the the listeners have any idea what you're talking about right now? Yeah, they know who Stella is. Do you think, do you think they care? Stella's great. I love Stella. Stella is wonderful. She's, um, but like, after the last ad read, actually, I was going to, I said I was going to go get a Coke. And then I Oh yeah, did. we never did. So let's uh, take this time to take a break. We'll be right back. Fuck! back we had some lunch boy was it tasty yep yep you actually no you didn't eat lunch did you i had a pretzel stick and some skittles a pretzel stick and some skittles like a hand like like 
a few Skittles. Give me a high five for that one, I just bro. didn't feel like a rap today. I was like, mm. I feel you, man. Sometimes you just get, you know, you're not feeling it. You can't force yourself to feel it. But, guys, we wanted to, uh, we want to tell you something. Got a little announcement. A fun little announcement for you. Um, Super Mega Land is on the way. Yes, we finally got the okay to start construction on our very own theme park, guys. So fucking excited. Yep, it's going to be actually attached to Disney World, mm -hmm. which we, is super exciting because we were afraid that they would not be uh, as... Ex we, we, did, we didn't think they were going to be as accepting as they were of the Super Mega brand. They were, actually, which leads us into the bigger announcement. We have been bought by Disney. Yep. Super Mega has been attained by Disney, guys. We cannot be more excited. We're going to have our own cinematic... Uh, universe, which mm -hmm. means that you know the movie review guys, you know they're gonna create their own movie. So you know we're gonna we're gonna have a movie review series sponsored by Disney, where we review all the best Disney movies that come out: Star Wars, Marvel films, 3D animated cash cows for children. Hey, you might even see us in some of those. You know, we might even be able to, you know, go to the Disney headquarters and, and uh, maybe do a little thing here and there and get ourselves in one of those movies. Yeah. But um, in reality, the actual announcement is we are going to uh, be at a convention. Uh, so, guys, drum roll, please. All of you out there going like, oh, God, please be the convention I'm thinking of. Oh, God. Ah! We are going to Anime Expo in Los Angeles, July 5th through the 8th. We're not going to be there the whole time. Or maybe we will. We'll, we'll, we'll announce the days that we're, that we're going to be there. Yeah, we're going to have a booth. Yeah. So you can come, it, uh, you can come meet us at the booth. Come say hey. Come, come get some. Uh, we'll, we're gonna be selling some really cool original prints. Um, Takes some pictures of us. We'll be in a big glass box mm -hmm. with with hazmat suits because we don't want to get <laughs> sick. Dude, I'm I'm actually terrified of getting sick from Anime Expo because when I went to E3, I got like the worst. Oh god, it sucked. I got like yeah. the flu or something. That sucked. I got sick after another convention. Did you get sick after the one where I stuck my fingers in your Surprisingly, mouth? Surprisingly, no. See, maybe that's... I was helping you. I was helping you, like, your body... You're get, growing my immune system. Yeah, exactly. You, you know, know, we... The we, more we, disgusting you are, the more your immune system adapts to a disgusting environment. That's probably true. I mean, dude, like, we we shook hands for, what, like, two hours straight? Yeah. And then you hadn't washed them, and you went and put your fingers right in my mouth? Yeah. For the funny, for the funny ha-ha? Yeah, and I was, funny ha-ha. I was, I was thinking just, Jesus Christ, Ryan. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> dude, what if I contracted, like... Ebola or something. Why would I have Ebola? No, like you shook hands with someone that had Ebola and then gave it to me. What like, if you gave me AIDS or something, dude? I'm not going to give you AIDS. You I know probably. AIDS is transferred through handshake. <laughs> through fingerprints on the tongue. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we're going to be at Anime Expo. We'd love to meet anyone who's going to be there. We yeah. will update you guys. Follow our Twitter um, as we're also going to update through there on specific days and times that we're going to be, I'm sure. Um... You know, as it gets closer, because it's not till July. Yeah, it's July fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. Yeah. Um, we um, not sure when exactly we're gonna be at the booth. We'll be there all four days. Um, we're only gonna be at the booth for certain periods of time. Uh, so we will update you as the dates get closer. Um, to when we will actually be at the booth. But yeah, we can't wait to can't wait to see you guys. Can't wait to meet you guys. Um, just have some have some fun. Can't wait to see all the you beautiful little weeb faces in Anime Expo. Take some pictures. Br bring your bring your uh, pillows so you can take a nap in line. Yeah, because our line's gonna be the biggest line at Anime it's Expo. It's gonna baby. be going out the door and around the <laughs> building six times. But yeah, I'm actually really excited because the only con we ever did was VidCon, and that was when we were like. Just starting. That was two months after we started Super Mega. We did our first con. Um, and people were stopping us a bunch. And that, that was VidCon. This is Anime Expo. It's, do you think the I th do you think the fan base is more rabid at VidCon or Anime Expo? I feel like it's more rabid at VidCon. Yeah, because that's like that's like just for YouTube. But hey, guys. Like Anime Expo. Anime Expo. Anime Expo. Expo. <laughs> Anime Expo. It'll be pretty good, my friend. Yeah, I, I, I'm just excited to. I'm excited to see to see the people that that support us. I'm excited to say hey. I'm excited to shake their hands, and yeah. I'm going to set up a personal kissing booth where they can kiss Lego if they want. What about you? Dude, let's just make let's just deck our booth out just to be a big kissing booth. <laughs> oh, my God. How inappropriate that would be. <laughs> <laughs> you have to show ID, though. <laughs> oh, God. Just the whole image of people showing ID before going to a kissing booth is... Boof. Boof. God damn. I'm, these Ryanisms are really slipping out today. Boof is another word for uh, for marijuana. Is it? Boof? Yeah. yeah. 
Man, just, you got just, booth? just bought a pound of the booth. <laughs> brought <laughs> the, that straight. The brought, booth. Brought, brought that shit straight to the booth. I can't talk either, <laughs> guys. Bring a pound of the booth straight to the booth at Anime Expo. Say that three times fast. Bring a pound of the booth straight to the booth. Yeah, that's hard, dude. Booth, booth, booth. Pfft. Can't do it, dude. Bring a pound of the bing. Wow. Just just bought a bing. pound of the booth. <laughs> bing. Dude, but like, yeah, bing, guys, bing, Anime Expo is gonna be fun. I can't wait to see your anime cosplay. It's Ryan and I are also gonna be anime cosplaying. Dude, if anyone dresses up as Stewie Griffin, I'm gonna lose my mind. Someone's gonna. You have to lose your mind now because someone's gonna dress up as Stewie. <laughs> I will too, man. In fact, if if someone can dress up as Ned Flanders and fully paint themselves, dude, let's cos- <laughs> fully let's, paint. Can themselves. we both cosplay as Ned Flanders and fully <laughs> fully paint ourselves yellow and everything for Anime Expo? Get the mustache and everything. That would be great. Okay, talking about mustaches. So back in December, um, with some friends, we were, we were like, let's all grow facial hair, and I was like, okay, um, so. I wanted to be a part of it, so I bought some Rogaine, and I was like, I'm going to put Rogaine on my face and see if it grows. And it did. It really, it really like, helped because uh, it, it, it makes hair grow. But I started growing, like, kind of a mustache and kind of a beard, but it looked really bad in the process. Like, what you're talking about, that awkward phase with hair growth where, it like, before it's, like, full, it's just kind of like, ugh. Yeah. So I shaved it off. But looking back now, if I had stuck with it to this point and still had it, I feel like I could have, like, a, a legit mustache and beard by now. You think? I think so. Like it would be full and it would look like decent. It wouldn't be scraggly. And I'd probably like be scraggly uneven. still. I don't know, but it would be like there, like you know. Yeah. Because it's been, you know, if I well, grew it's all that. All about pushing through onto the other side. I'm just wondering if I pushed through because that was only two weeks and it looked like, you know, it was noticeable. So I wonder if, like, you know, now four months, if if I would have like good looking facial hair. I don't know. I don't know if it would look good. Do you have to like break it in? Do you have to do like one first grow to like break in your facial hair and then after that it's okay? I don't know. I think everyone's facial hair is different. So like some people just, some people will never be able to grow decent facial hair. Yeah. Um, other people can, like me, I can't, I can't grow a full beard. I can grow a decent beard. You got a great beard. But it's not like a full mustache. Like my mustache is pretty thin. Yeah. Compared to like most beards out there where it's like all the upper lip is just covered. And I know some people like can grow it in the middle. Mm-hmm. And then some people don't. Yeah, like I on don't the, on the fulcrum or whatever that part of the your angel, face is. What is it called? A- a- Inglet? Ang- no, that's you're thinking of the tips of shoelaces. Oh no, that those are aglets. Or aglets, whatever. yeah. I think this is called the fulcrum. I think this is also called like an angel bow. Angel bow? Angel's bow or something. That's, that's cute. Nice and cute. I can't remember. I can't see. grow facial hair there. In fact, I can't grow. It's spotty. So like right here in the middle of my chin can't grow. I can only grow it on like the two sides of my chin. And then right here, I don't know about you, but like this spot, I cannot grow anything. It's just a big empty patch. So <laughs> what am I thinking of? Why did I say angel bow? What's an angel? It's bow? something. This is like has a nickname. I don't know what it is. Look up nickname for is it called a fulcrum? Am I wrong on that one? Was that right? Uh, looking at his puzzle. I'm looking. They just aren't naming it. What is name it? it? Is Come on. Angel? What is the what the philtrum? Philtrum is the location. What? Yeah, that's a, that's gross. That's a gross sounding name. What's a fulcrum then? I love I love how every time you do the OK Google thing, it triggers probably thousands of people's phones to do the exact same thing. <laughs> Whatever. OK Google, text mom. I want to bang you. Send. <laughs> I don't think it. Sure. No! <laughs> no! 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 Stop! <laughs> <laughs> did, it, did it do it? No, thank God. Can it can it send text yet? Let me see. I just want to see like, okay, Google, text mom, haha, I love you, you're gay. Text mom, sure. Yeah. Mobile or home? You have to then say mobile or home. So. Oh. So. Okay. My mom's not actually gay, and that also wasn't an insult. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I meant it in, in, the, in a loving way. In a loving way, yeah. <laughs> Whatever. I always call my mom gay, and I only mean it in a loving way. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm trying to take the word back for my people. <laughs> what? <laughs> my people. You know, All I the re- straight white men that haven't been able to use it as a diss. <laughs> we're taking it back. We're taking it back, and we're using it as a as a as a word of love. So absolutely, absolutely. You know, you know what I got back into yesterday, and I am fully addicted to now. Bongos. No. Oh. It's Tiny Tower. What is that? Did you ever play Tiny Tower? It's Tiny Tower. Let me let me show you. I, I I bet you remember this game. This fucking game, Ryan. Your mobile game. Look at this. Hold on, hold on. Have you ever played this? I don't think so. Like, I'm not really into mobile games. I never have been. 
But Tiny Tower, there's something about it. It's the most addicting mobile game like you will ever play. And it's not. This isn't a. Brand this, no, it's not a sponsorship. I it sounds like a love, sponsorship at the start of it. I love Tiny Tower. It gets me so hard. It's where you have to. It's like oh, you have shit. you have to you have to build a little like skyscraper, and there's like hundreds and hundreds of types of floors. And you can like customize them. And you got to like deliver people in the elevator and do little tasks. And you can like dress them up. It's ah. Oh. Can, can you can you put bathrooms and stuff in? No, it's like it's like floor by floor. Like each floor has a theme. Like oh. I have I have a uh, space themed apartment, Asian cuisine, art studio. Do people uh, live in those places and you have to keep care of them and be like Yeah, oh, and you got to give them you... jobs at different like shops and stuff and oh, you can like cool. customize fun. each one. But there's like, oh my god, dude, it's it's and it keeps building and going up. Keeps going up and you got to buy new floors and um you got to stock the items in the shops which makes you money while you're gone and everything. And it's not one of those games that's like loaded with microtransactions because it's a really old game mm-hmm. from like the golden era of mobile gaming before it got like overrun with micro. There are microtransactions, but it's not like um, they don't affect the progression at all. No, okay. like it's a game where there is like waiting, like building floors. It's like mm-hmm. you gotta wait like a couple hours sometimes, and you can like do that thing where you pay to speed it up. Okay. Well, you, well, you can buy currency to speed it up, but you can also fully play the game without any like thing taken away from it, without paying for anything. Mm-hmm. It's but it's so much fun. But leisurely, you can yeah. just sit there and play it. Yeah. Well, okay. I mean, there's there's always like something you, have you can do. If you wait for a- okay. Like you can always figure out something to do. It's super fun. And boy, I'm I mean, guys, guys, you should go try Tiny Tower again. Tell me, tell me, tell me how many floors you get. Cause I, dude, when I played this game way back in the day, I had like 50 floors. And it's, you should download it, man. It is, it is quite, quite the mobile game. That's the problem. Like, like I, I just don't feel like there's any good mobile games anymore. There aren't. They're all trash. Like I really enjoy Tiny Tower and. What else? I, I I tried playing this this new Tamagotchi mobile game that just came out, and that's actually pretty fun. Um, I mean, like, you know what? There's, there's the Katamari Damacy mobile game where it's, like, an endless runner. But I have an issue with, like, I don't know. Clicker mo- games? It's whatever? not a clicker game. It's just, like, it's it's like a maze runner. I mean, a, not maze, <laughs> temple run type of game okay. where you just have to, like, swipe left and right yeah. and jump. Um, but I don't know. I kind of have a problem with, like, more recent Katamari stuff, like the Katamari PSP game and this, because they're not made with the original creator anymore. They're just made by Bandai Namco. So and it's made from like a game standpoint instead of his like odd yeah, mind exactly. doing something and then being like, make it into uh, this is how it's going to work in the game. Like, you know, he worked on the first two games and you can see like the weird creativity and like, you like, I don't know. You, that's why I like Katamari Masi because you can tell that it wasn't made to make money or be a popular game. It was made out of like, a really cool idea and passion project with a bunch of weird creativity mm-hmm. and the new stuff like you can just tell that it's n- it's different like it doesn't have that like old unique feeling it yeah. feels like they okay they took the Katamari Damacy characters in the world and then they had like a team over at Namco Bandai create a game that yeah. I don't know they don't get weird enough with it I guess that's what it is like it feels too safe it feels like more or safe does it now feel too like weird for the sake of being weird instead of like coming from a legit just place of oddity yeah it just feels like they're just like making a game because like like a game studio would make a game instead of like i don't know it doesn't feel as like crude and weird as Mm -hmm. it used to which makes me a little sad you get you don't you don't get the full experience but he's making a new game right now the creator which i'm really excited for you build little parks it's like it's called Wadham and and you like walk around and you have to blow things up or something. It looks fun. Blow things up. Yeah, and then and then he has another game called Nobi Nobi Boy, which we should totally play on the channel. It's really What's fun. Nobi Nobi. You're like a little like worm thing, and you walk around and you just like interact with things in the environment and get longer and like. Oh, you've you've I think you've told me. Yeah, that it's yeah, it's yeah, weird yeah. though. It's super cool. It's the coolest. I thought I was the coolest. Ever. You you are the coolest ever, Ryan. <laughs> Good. Okay. <laughs> Whew. Guys, I need to give you an update on something, by the way. Uh, earlier in the podcast when I said, I'm going to go get a Coca-Cola, I changed my mind. I'm not, I did not get a Coca-Cola. I'm not going to put all that sugar in my body. This is not a diss against Coca-Cola because I'm sure they have a wonderful legal team and they'd love to have anything negative about them taken off the internet. But I, I just, I didn't want, I'm not in the mood for all that sugar and all those calories because you know what? That's bad for me. It's going to make me feel like, like poo-poo later. And it's caffeine. I already had caffeine today. I had a cup of coffee. So, I'm sorry, Coca-Cola, maybe another time. Go hug a tree, Matt. I'd love to hug a tree. Coca-Cola is my god. I I worship Coca-Cola on a day-to-day basis. Do you know the secret formula? No. Maybe. Whisper in my ear. 
Are you serious? Yeah. That's the secret formula? That's the secret formula. Are you serious? I'm fucking serious. The tears of Ray William Johnson? <laughs> You're not Shit, shit! Oh, hold on. Someone's outside of the recording room. Burr. Hello? Burr. <gasps> we gotta make a horror movie about that. <laughs> Some guy just accidentally discovers the Coca-Cola secret formula and then just <laughs> like... Looks like an FBI agent, but I, I like the idea that the agents are all wearing like suit like coca-cola branded suits <laughs> like red suits like they're all red like a little lapel and everything. <laughs> yeah they have coca buttons for coca-cola <laughs> yeah. i stand with coca-cola or something like that <laughs> dude i i wonder if, if corporations like coca-cola have ever done like evil shady shit because they're like billion dollar corporations and like they seem like such wholesome like products but you wonder like when corporations get that big like you know like i'm sure yeah they've done a bunch of fucked up things like we're finding out right now like about facebook like i wonder like what majority of massive corporations have done really fucked up shit that no one will ever know about? Well, that's the thing. Like, Facebook has a reason to... I'm not saying, like, it's a justifiable reason, but they have a reason to be fucked up and collect people's information because they can sell it. I don't think Coca-Cola has that, you know, that, that markability of, like, oh, yeah, why don't you do all these things so we can learn information about you? It's just, like, we have to make a good product. Facebook, it's not about making a good product. It's, like, about... Making a decent enough, like, layout for a bunch of people to use to stay connected and then for you to gain information about these people and then sell that information to, to, advertisers. to other companies and advertisers. Have you ever watched, like, an interview with Mark Zuckerberg? He's so uncomfortable. Like, <laughs> he's, he, like, he does... he's, he's just this introverted, like, weird person. Like, he doesn't know, like, there's something so off and, like, robotic about him when he talks. Well, didn't he? I mean, he created, like, Facebook... Because he didn't have any friends or no, I'm sure he no, had he friends. I don't want to. I don't want to say. I don't want to. Have be you not bully. seen the Social Network? He, he created Hot or Not or something. I forgot what it was called. Where you like? I know, but that that movie took a good bit of liberties every now and then. Like they they uh, made up characters every now and then. Still a really good movie. though. Yeah, really good movie. Movie's awesome. I need to rewatch that. It's been a while. Oh, but wait. I don't know. Mark Zuckerberg, like he's just so like wait, have awkward. You ever seen in the interviews. Zodiac. The Zodiac. The, yeah. No. <gasps> Is Mark Zuckerberg in the Zodiac? <laughs> no, dude. But, imagine Mark Zuckerberg became movie. like a huge you actor. See the Zodiac. It's so good. It's so good. How good? It's my favorite film by David Fincher. Okay. I, can you imagine Mark Zuckerberg as like a male model, <laughs> like him, like with his shirt off, like an like a like a uh, Calvin Klein model, where he's standing there in, in like tight little underwear, and where? like it's showing his like cro his like V of oh, the V of yeah. his crotch, and he's just kind of like looking at the camera with that like blank face he does where his lips are <laughs> his lips are a little agape like and like chapped yeah and his eyes are just kind of like he has very piercing eyes yeah like i wonder if mark zuckerberg like has like a dark side to him and like like you know maybe he's killed some people he ordered look, some people to be killed he looks like the type of person wherever you're having a conversation like you know they're looking at you and but you don't feel like they're listening to what you're saying and they're just kind of like thinking about you Instead of like listening to what you're saying, type of thing. Yeah, I feel like Mark Zuckerberg always just feels like he's like look. He'd be looking past me if he like he he like he'd looking through me, you know. Yeah. Like his little his tiny little beady eyes would be like piercing my soul. Well, I mean, our tiny puny brains couldn't entertain him. Oh, like I wonder if we could make Mark Zuckerberg laugh. Do you think Mark? Do you think Mark Zuckerberg's ever watched Super Mega? Do you think he's ever sat down and been like, oh man, it, it's been a really stressful day at work. I'm going to sit down and watch Super Mega. I think it's his favorite post-masturbation watch. <laughs> he gets home. He doesn't pleasure his wife. He goes and he masturbates. Does in his, he have in his, a wife? Yeah, and a kid. Jesus. He's, he's, got a, he's got an Asian wife and, a little, and a, little, a little daughter, I think. I bet he gets home, goes into his study, goes... <laughs> he masturbates to all the Facebook photos he collects that day. Because he's yeah. like, okay, Facebook, show me the hottest pictures from Facebook today. And it's like... Okay, Daddy Zuckerberg, and then it shows him all the pictures. <laughs> okay, Daddy Zuckerberg, and he gets in, he gets in his big recliner. His house speaks to him. Yeah, he has like a house computer <laughs> that he built himself. That calls him Daddy Zuckerberg, and when he jerks off to Facebook pictures, the girls in bikinis, and, he, and then he goes, <laughs> shoots out like like a little spray of 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 Mark Zuckerberg. A spray. It looks like a just fucking uh, sunblock spray. Just, <laughs> but it, it mists off into the air. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, <laughs> He calls that his, uh, his Zucker splooge. He goes, ah. He doesn't have to clean it up. He engineered that himself, too. He had a little device put in, so it just goes, Psst. Oh, dude. And then he opens up that's YouTube. The perfect fertilization technique. But spray? Th that's like that's like what, what like mushrooms do. You don't want globs. You want it to spray. Like a, like a mist? 
Yeah. But what if it goes off into the wind and gets someone pregnant like a mile away the next day? That doesn't That's work. a danger. You've heard those stories of like, oh, I got, I'm pregnant. I didn't cheat on you. I just, I think it was, I, the, it was the hot tub. Yeah, it was the hot tub or I sat on a toilet seat weird <laughs> and maybe not some dudes come on the toilet seat, <laughs> yeah. went into my vagina. I, I love those. I love those excuses <laughs> where it's like, it's like, no, I, it must have been in the pool. Water. <laughs> you know? That's not how it works. <laughs> like, do you, uh, first off, like power to the sperm that can survive in a pool you know, long enough to, I don't, like, stay there. I think, A, the chlorine would kill it. Well, yes, B, it would. B, I also... also kills. Yeah, like, I, I'm pretty sure it dies, like, pretty instantly, like, pretty fast. Like, well, it does not stay alive long. It's a, it's a rough trek to get to that egg. And that's why, you know, it's, it's like a long journey, too. Like, it's not just like, it's just like, you're in a pool, and it's just like, okay, now it's gonna magically follow this entire path and get there. Hey, we but... Were a, we were, like, a little s- fucking thing. Cell. Cellular Dude, thing. you won. You won the race out of everyone. There are millions and you won. That's so crazy. Fucking kick their asses. We're all winners. Every Guys, no matter how you feel today, how you feel about life, whatever's going on, just remember, you were a winner out of millions, billions of individuals. You yeah. beat everyone in that race. So no matter how you feel, just remember, you are a winner. You won. In our eyes, you're a winner. You're, yeah. You're always a winner in my eyes. Joseph? There's just some guy out there named Joseph, and he he just looked at the screen and was like, what? It's a, it's a sign from God. It is a sign from God, Joseph. Do exactly what you were planning. Oh, shit. Joseph, I Joseph, I know that you you had that thing in your head that you were thinking about doing. Just do it. Just just be sorry. Unless it had to do with, like, killing people, then don't. I gotta, I'm getting a call from God. You're getting a call What's from it? God right now? Yo, what up, God? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'll tell him. He, he wants us to end the podcast. Why? He says he needs us at the gates. He wants to talk to us a little bit real quick. I don't know. What Are we in trouble? About. I don't know. I didn't ask him. Did he sound mad? He sounded a little mad. That could have just been like, because it's a, it's a Wednesday. You know how he is on Wednesdays. Yeah, I know how he is. Shit, dude. Okay, uh, so should we just wrap this up? Yeah, well, if God needs to see us. Is this about? Come here. Do you think this is about the... Do you think that's what it's about? Okay, let's just... Okay, just, okay. Hey, well, th- thanks for listening, guys. We gotta go. Okay, let's go now. Bye, guys. <laughs>